you don't have a lap under there, if you don't have a substrate you're going to attach to, tin should not be put down to plywood. Another thing most people don't know. Okay. <clears throat> tin expands and contracts daily. And so what happens on tin is if you don't use a neoprene, a neoprene underneath the, the head of the screw, if you use rubber, rubber won't make it 10 years in Texas. Neoprene gives you maybe 15. But also, metal expands and contracts daily, so that little round hole turns into an oval hole. Mm -hmm. and that little you, oval are you hole, saying if, if you have a metal roof that then the, the neoprene is not going to last, you have to get another roof? No, you have to get new screws. Change the There's a washer. Oh, okay. The, the okay. neoprene washer underneath oh, every the screw. Okay. okay. They have rubber washers and they have neoprene washers. You're not talking about the padding though. No, 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 no. I'm talking about anything but just the screws at the moment. Okay. There's a number of things I can talk about. We'll get okay. okay. That that sealing, self-sealing underlayment mm -hmm. I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely got to use self-sealing underlayment. Okay. Because that way every screw you put through plugs the hole as it goes through it. Mm -hmm. And then you got a 30-year warranty underneath your metal roof. So if your metal roof leaks, not for any other reason than just over time, you ended up with an oval. Over 15 years, the neoprene cracks and the water is getting in around the neoprene and into this oval. Or um, it pulls loose because you didn't catch the, the one by four that was this far underneath the shingle. You gotta remember to use a good two inch screw, okay? All these things come into play if you're going to do metal over. Now, metal over works good unless somebody's already done too much shingle and your roof is already like this. Laying metal into a bellied out roof doesn't work. Going in and correcting a belly out roof isn't always that easy because they had three layers of shingle on there and they bent the thing and didn't support it. And you go in there, tear all the shingle off, and you go, okay, I'm gonna push that board straight. You push that board and it doesn't go straight, it just disconnects at the top and pulls off. They don't unstraighten like they bent. Over time, you could do it, move it out a little bit, move it out, and meanwhile, you get rain on. So you can't really do that, right? So my recommendation is. Uh, you deal with the roof um, depending on the situation with the roof. The lumber, sometimes the wood, if there's enough slope in there, you're toast. Okay. All right? You got to come back in and actually put new rafters. Let's go ahead and move on out of the sun. But that gives you a type of uh, shingle. So we talked about roof, roof, roof. Um, we're going to talk about foundation. We're going to look underneath the foundation in a second. But one nice thing, this happens a lot. This has a concrete slab on the front. It's typically because they all rot out. The front porch is typically rot. And so somebody put a slab on here. One of the things when you put a slab on here is make sure the darn thing slopes away from the house because what happens more than not, more than not, is that the water ends up coming to this end and goes along the edge of the beam and invites all the termites to come visit because they now soften the wood up for. All right, and that is absolutely, oh, and also don't let me forget, the best place to put a termite nest is in a good concrete bunker. Concrete bunker. More termites will start under here and have their nest under here and enter that house than any other place you can possibly pick around this whole thing. Why? It's cool, good moisture, and it's well protected. And so they'll penetrate over here and go in, typically into the beam, and then march on through the house. So, biggest source of termites. Now, what you look for is, are there any holes in the concrete that have been plugged? That tells you if they've been treated. Gives you some idea when you run into the termites, because you'll you will run into termites. I would say the exception to the rule is if I get a house that's this old and there's no termites, I'm hoping I'm wearing a mask when I'm crawling underneath looking at it, because it has some good, serious chlorine. Mm -hmm. The good stuff. 30-year half-life. That's why we don't use it anymore, supposedly. The reason is, and it's a good reason, that when I tear this house down, nobody knows that I just sprayed with chlorine two years before I tore the house down. Baby's back here playing in the sand, doesn't know nothing about it. Baby's in here, blah, 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 blah. Look at me, I'm, I got all this dirt on me. What's in that dirt? 30 year half life, chlorine, known to be a major carcinogen. So, when you tear a house like this down, it might have had chlorine under it, might have had DDP under it. These are like, you know, chemicals we use just like candy in the old days. Think about that. I don't say it's a danger, I'm not saying it's a scare tactic, I'm just saying keep that in mind that the dirt could be treated at some point. So if you're sensitive already, if you have immune system issues already, this is not the place to test them at. Alright? Be careful. Take okay, precautions. Now as we go looking at it, I'm trying to stay on the outside I guess. One of the nice things about this one for the front of it is look at all the squareness of it. This house is actually not major disturbed. You look at the squareness. When I close this door, 
It's not been chopped off severely. It's not been chopped off severely. It's fairly square on the bottom. And it actually closes, even though it's been beat like crazy. This tells you that the, the, the levelness of the front of the house is very good, which means that there's probably not a lot of problems with the beams. There's not a lot of problems with the, the piers. And there's not going to be a lot of problems, most likely, with termite infestation in this area because you're not seeing a lot of structural issues or movement or anything, consequences that would come with that, or a lot of wood rot. Now, I know from having been inside, we did have a leak in it. Um, hey, Brian. So, yes. Quick question about the, the yes. porch. Are these, these tend to be monolithic or are they inside? No, no, that's going to be all hollow in inside with probably dirt, brick, trash. Okay. Anything they can dig up to fill it up and they pour the slab on top of it. Okay. So yeah, this was typically poured, and this is going to be newer because the way it was poured, you can see the way the sides are poured and the top was poured. Okay. I want to say this probably is not more than 25 years old at most. It's fresh. That's relatively fresh for concrete. Okay. Uh, and then it's also stayed surprising the level. So I want to say that somebody who put this in knew relatively good what they were doing. Now I say relatively good. Relatively good. What do I have that I can test in here? Anybody got a marble in their pocket? Um, the best way to test it is just a simple marble. You can put a marble in here, and I'm going to tell you it's going to pull to me. The second way to test it, although I can't do it as well as I used to be able to, if somebody's wearing regular shoes, <laughs> is to walk backwards. Now, I'm going to tell you that it's lower at this side than it is on that side, but when you walk backwards, your body is extremely sensitive to the changes of the floor. When you walk forward, your brain actually compensates for you and makes the floor level for you in your mind. Backwards, you'll feel it. You're much more sensitive going backwards. So when we go in the house in a minute, you'll be able to walk through and you'll feel it with your toes, but if you turn around in the spot that you feel it at, you walk backwards, you'll feel it exaggerated because you're always fear of falling. And so your backward sensitivity is always greater than your forward sensitivity because I got my toes, I got size 14 feet, I don't fall forward very often. <laughs> fall backwards, that's another story. So keep that in mind whenever you're checking the, the, the levelness of the house. Let's work our way around and, and just discuss a few more things we can see on the front that are going to be issues.